So, welcome. If you want to come forward, we're going to keep this really casual. Uh, feel free to come and go as you need. Um, so, Liz and I are going to talk a little bit about, I, I'm Emily, I work at um, the Los Angeles County Museum of Art, I'm the web manager and uh, I do web stuff, we just launched a new mobile app, et cetera, et cetera. I'm Liz Filardi, I work at the Met and I'm a producer, so I do project management, product management, work on website, mobile, all kinds of things. And I just realized I'm supposed to be. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, as most of you know, I think most of you here have seen pri seen some of this stuff or attended talks before, um, so we'll keep keep the description short. But basically, uh, Muse Women was started as a way to talk about issues of women uh, in our field. And so we are looking for ways to um, continue to raise, bring up for discussion what it means to be a woman working in technology and continue to address the issues, um, which if you follow sort of mainstream tech news is, is a big issue. And I think um, something that's continuing to rise to the top for us mm -hmm. is how uh, museum technology can actually be an example for the larger technology field. We have a lot of women in leadership positions, and we have even more women who are coming up through the ranks. I mean, you guys see that out there, and, and museums themselves are staffed, what, 70% women uh, or more. And so we are looking to um, both address issues um, of uh, parity and representation, as well as to um, lift up practices that are great, which we know you all are working on. So, um, so we're going to talk a little bit about some of our current projects, and then we're going to talk about an exciting thing that's coming for 2016. Also just want to point out that we're a really um, open group. We want to work with men, obviously, um, and just kind of I think issues that affect women in technology affect everyone, so it's an open discussion. Um, and, and there was actually recently a study that showed, I think, that, um, that women do the best in the workplace when they have the, the, expressed, the expressed support of the men they work with. So thank you to our men who are in the room. Mm -hmm. We see all of you. We appreciate your support. Yeah, so the initiatives that we worked on this year, well, I'll, first I'll just say that um, we have just kind of organically uh, come about initiatives that are really agile, lightweight, um, super simple to put together, and that's partly a product of our bandwidth, since we are just a couple of women um, who have full-time jobs. It's also just, um, I think it's just a really nice model for how we can be um, start discussions and be sort of disruptors for um, things that people are already doing and thinking about. Um, so, the th so the three that we were working on this year, uh, the mentor pilot program, how many people here participated in that? Excellent. Amazing. Cool. Um, and then also the career data project, which is by um, Kate Reisman, was working on this, and who filled out a survey about your, your you know, career situation. Great. Um, so she's still working on um, processing that data, and we're going to send out a newsletter to everyone about that. Uh, but uh, maybe we'll talk a little bit about that in a second. And then the last thing is the 2016 Tech Fellows, which Brinker is really spearheading. Brinker works for SciArc, and she's now in Saudi Arabia. If you didn't know that already, she really wanted to be here. Um, she even sent us her slides <laughs> from Saudi Arabia. <laughs> um, but she, yeah, she does sh really amazing work. Um, she's a real rock star. Um, but she really cares about this Tech Fellows thing, and it's, it's pretty exciting, so I'm, we're happy to share it with you all. Yeah, so uh, the mentor pilot, this is um, kind of what we worked on for this conference where we uh, put a call out saying who wants to participate either as a mentor, a mentee, or a peer mentor. Um, we'll, we will take the liberty to pair you up with someone we think might be a good match for you based on your response to a survey um, and also based on uh, personal experience since many of you uh, we already knew someone new. <laughs> um, and once doing that, we kind of kept it really lightweight and just decided a lot of it would be left up to you. It just kind of, the purpose of it was to create the discussion and make sure that um, people are thinking about it, actively um, working on it together. 
um, and, and so that we can have this conversation. Um, so yeah, I think what we want to do now is just talk about what we're going to do after the conference for this current iteration and then what we might do in the future and kind of discuss what you guys think about um, what you'd like to see or um, thoughts on, on how it went. Um, so, so we will send out a survey to everyone who participated and just get some general feedback and thoughts on how it went. Um, we got some informal feedback, but it would be good to just get a little, a little bit something more in depth. Um, but yeah, I think from there, we're really thinking about the future in terms of does, uh, you know, doing a mentor pilot, doing it again, the same exact way makes sense. Um, in terms of, um, continuing on and evolving this project is growth necessary is it important for this to scale up or is it more important that it stay agile and um, be kind of like reproducible in future conferences exactly the same format does anybody want to share anything from there um, with a group of, about their mentorship experience this week here You know that that uh, you often will select out like I work in an art museum, and so I will often kind of gravitate toward people working in art museums um, because the the structures are so similar. It makes it very easy to have those conversations. Um, but that you you paired me with somebody who is um, not in an art museum, and then it made for really interesting discussions. And um, and like I said, I think one of the things that was really important about that was that it was somebody that I may not have ever ended up. Um, connecting with on my own or on her own because I think for her as well that she probably wouldn't have sought out somebody at an art museum mm -hmm. um, because it, it doesn't necessarily feel like a, an obvious place to connect so I thought that was really really positive great do you, do you feel like that <laughs> like for uh, unexpected connections maybe? yeah I think maybe unexpected and it may it may be outside of cross-field connections, but I think that, that idea is something that is, and it may even be just sort of personalities. I think that mm -hmm. it, it really, I was saying this yesterday in the um, mentor session, that you know sometimes people see connections, possible connections between you and another person that um, you wouldn't see yourself. A and that you know we all think that we know ourselves really well, but sometimes we don't. And that maybe you see something in me and in Miranda that made sense. Does anybody feel like they were m matched up with someone that wasn't a good fit? I know that sort of puts people on the spot. Yeah, this is a safe space. <laughs> <laughs> Unless your mentor's here, then don't say anything. I guess, yeah. I guess the reason why I ask, and hopefully we will get some honest feedback when we send out the surveys, is just, um, you know, we took a big chance just deciding that we were going to use our, you know, personal ability to read people to, to make matches. Um, you know, I think there are a lot of matchmaking software options out there that could be like match.com uses an algorithm. And of course, we don't have that. <laughs> we don't have the resources to do that. So we're basically making matches based on your responses to the survey and, and like, you know, prior experience just speaking with you. Um, so I, I'm really interested in, in kind of feedback about that process like unexpected matches is a really nice outcome but it could also like backfire or um, you know maybe there's a more intentional way to do it too where it's like actual interviews or something like that um, does anybody have any other thoughts on that I think it's great that you put thought into trying to match people but I think ultimately we're all humans we all work in museums or something related to museums. We're all going to have some sort of point of connection. And there's always something you can all learn from anybody. So just the, the fact of putting two people together to make a connection and find some interesting conversation is great. Mm -hmm. 
cool. Mm, what would you call that? Like spe spe match specificity, or like, do we need mat matches at all? Yeah, I guess my point was more that even if it's not like a perfect match, it's still going to be. It can still be a great experience. Okay, I understand. Oh my gosh, I'm losing my ability to write. Doesn't <laughs> need to be perfect. Okay. I think that's a great point too, because the community, the museum tech community, is just so uh, warm and giving anyway. So it almost does the work for you. Like we're just putting a little bit of structure to something that's already happening. Um, Liz, you were going to comment. Well, it's kind of a, it's a it's a little bit of a different kind of comment, but I'm just fascinated by what you said, Jennifer, because I wonder if having these relationships, we start to learn over time what the, um, what the crossovers are, what the strong crossovers are, and what the divergence, divergences are, divergencies are, and then what, what um, more, then br more broadly, what we can learn from each other. I mean, you will do that with, in your mentor relationship, but if we do this and we're talking to each other and kind of reporting back, what do we learn about ourselves in the field um, that that we can investigate further? It's just it's an interesting question. I think that was not what you asked, but no, it's interesting <laughs> for interesting research questions. <laughs> And I'm interested in, in sort of the extreme practicalities. So does anybody have any anything on well, anybody have anything on uh, on like the setup, the number of times you met, how the emails happened, how like this actual program. Do you guys have any feedback to share about that right now? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I, com I really appreciated having a mentor um, since I'm new to this whole conference and even coming to conferences about museums. And so having um, been paired with somebody and knowing um, what we talked about is like we met that second day for breakfast. So if it became like something like, you know you have your mentor to meet up with, so you have someone to meet with, especially being new, um, I think that was really golden. And then she took me under her wing when we went over to the Mia that, that night, because I didn't, again, it was like, I'm an introvert naturally, so this is really, <laughs> like, whew, <laughs> sorry. So, um, no, no, that's, I, I mean, uh, this is an emotional process, and I think uh, anybody in this room who has been to more than one conference could point out uh, that moment. I was a grad student when I went to AAM the first time, and distinctly remember sitting on my graduate advisor's bed um, sobbing. You know, like, <laughs> I'm so, over. you're just so overwhelming and you have a big experience. So is that to you about meeting early so you have a buddy and a friendly face? Or is it about a specific, uh, like something that's sort of prescribed so you don't have, it's not, it's not like a, a something to, a hurdle to get over early. Do you know what I mean? Um, it's actually a combination of the two um, because I fall into two categories are now three with being a mentee, a scholar, and then also a newbie. So okay. within those three parameters, but even if I weren't um, a scholar or even if I weren't new, to have somebody that you know is coming here that's going to meet up with you, um, because you may be coming from you know, other conferences, you may have come here before and had success, but then again, maybe you don't know if you're going to meet up with those same people. So just knowing that you have somebody that's going to connect with you that first day, that first lunch, first um, you know, I think it's mm -hmm. golden. I mean, I, I was blessed, just like I said, because she, she's taken the initiative. We've already arranged like a phone call conversation follow up to see what's going on to talk, and um, like I hope that I can, you know, we can develop and help each other. Like I don't want it just to be her giving to me. Um, so, but just to have that first, like you know, like you had that happy hour, mm -hmm. um, which was with everything else that was going on, it was kind of tough to catch up with one another. So it would be nice to, you know, even if it's just a room like this in a circle or whatever, that everybody's meeting up with their men mentors and mentees. I mean, I know there's like so much to switch in yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> and all this time. So it was, it was, it was all three of my roles. It helped. <laughs> Great. So to that point, did you, would you have, I guess in the future, would you want it to be part of like the MCN program rather than sort of like the happy hour kind of informally in the in the bar or? Um, um, I 
think it helps to structure it if it's part of the MCM program. Mm -hmm. And then to be like a suggested, like they had the segue of like the drinking about museums. Mm -hmm. So it could be, again, in that first two day or two, yeah. where it's all brand new. Right. Um, you know, just to have like, it's the, the mentor pilot meetup. Doesn't have to be about drinking. Doesn't have to be about happy hour. Um, right. Just hanging out to get to know each other kind of thing. You know, because, yeah. you know, like I was lucky. I, I met a couple of people, even though my mentor was late. Like mm -hmm. other people were there talking until I, she came and showed up. So it sounds to me like also maybe there would be a benefit of encouraging that pre-conference phone call in those yeah, early yeah. meetings. How many people did um, have that with your pair? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So we just have a request if you could introduce yourself if you feel comfortable. Um, so, okay, so we just wanted to get, yeah, Rachel. Um, so we're, we just want to get some of the practicalities down uh, and have a little bit of a discussion about this. Mm -hmm. um, but we are also going to be sending out a survey. So we encourage all of you to be as detailed as you're able in the survey to really share because um, one thing that we're interested in with future iterations is exploring whether or not this is possible to do online. And what might that look like? Um, we had a lot of people who wrote in who said, I can't come to MCN, can I still participate? So how could we do something, you know, um, and what does that look like if you never get to meet face to face? Yeah, Rachel, sorry. Um, so I, I will introduce myself for Periscope. Um, I'm Rachel <laughs> Ropeek. I work at the Guggenheim Museum in New York. Um, and I, I was part of this on a kind of peer to peer level, which I really appreciated. It was sort of like, it was, it was nice, we were both in a place where we had equal things to exchange. But I think one of the things that was really appreciated was also that it was kind of informal. Like I, I think it was actually nice that it was not part of the conference structure itself. Um, because I think that takes some of the pressure off. I think especially if it's somebody that you don't know already, if you, if there's some sort of expectation of like, oh, and at this session we need to sit down across the table from each other, that that kind of tightens up the um, the feeling again. And there was something that was very loose about like, well, when are you free? When am I free? Mm -hmm. Oh, we can just sit and have coffee in the hotel lobby. And there was something that helped, I think, make the the conversation flow more easily from the beginning. Hum humanized a little. Yeah. yeah. Anybody else have anything? What if, what do you guys think about digital? digital uh, or on online, like if we said, we're gonna do a mentor match for the month of January. Like, would people be interested in that? Would people, do you, did you like it being a face-to-face? -face? What would mentoring at the Guggenheim look like? I mean, I think it would look sort of functionally similar to this where we would have people sign up, mm -hmm. um, but then you would be encouraged to, you know, maybe have four Google Hangouts, you know, one a week or, uh, maybe we would do something sort of specific to a topic like career change mentoring or, or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, what it, is the person-to-person -person thing something that you guys feel like is extremely important? Amy, here in the front, yeah. Um, so my mentor and I really didn't have time to meet up during the conference. So we're planning to meet up afterwards um, online. And I, I feel like, I, I f we felt like that would work. So I kind of feel like that could apply, especially if there are specific um, types of topics that people are interested in. No, it's fine. She's she's periscoping live right now, so that was like a really lovely um, double duty. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> I um, and my mentor, my mentee, uh, couldn't make it here, so we'll we'll do it over online. And I think we do online discussions all the time. I'm wonder if we could think about it though, in because I've heard this group group share to mentor thing. It, it's been nice here also to kind of be able to 
be part of a group of people that are part of this program. So I also just wondering, and you, maybe this isn't part of it, but that perhaps the one-on-one -on -one that there could be matching um, and, and some guidelines or some ideas of how that works, you know, so that everyone, no one feels, that everyone feels what they're getting, what they expected out of it. But perhaps that there's also a, a, a larger group of participants that can also, like, you know, share back. And so that we're kind of not just too off on their own, because I also see that then things might fall back, you know, sometimes having deadlines <laughs> helps. And um, so to be able to, um, come back as a whole group, have, you know, online happy hour on Google Hangout or whatever, and talk about how things are going, what the challenge, kind of learn from each other, since it's, since it is, we're billing things as a pilot, so learn from each other, talk about it, but I also just think the value of learning from how our relationships are working with one another is kind of part of this fun, so perhaps that could be part of it. So like, uh, one-on-one -on -one group mentoring and then like a, a ra you know like a group wrap up hangout or twitter yeah chat like once a, once a, once well, you know once every couple months okay. we all get together once a week is a lot uh, for anything yeah. we could um, start just by <laughs> doing you know that is a lot we could start we could start by doing a hangout just to discuss the results like we'll go back look at the surveys put together kind of like a report, for lack of a better term, send it out, and then we could do a hangout to discuss it and just see what works from there. I think that's a great idea because what it could be is that there could be one topic related to this kind of professional mm -hmm. development. So let's say um, once a quarter, I hate saying quarter, it sounds so, once a quarter we have a group group hangout. The beginning starts with some kind of presentation, you know, so maybe it's just the report back or you can see another time that someone, oh, I dug into what mentoring means out there and or I read this, um, I read this great article about women in technology. Or, I mean, I know it's not all women, but, um, or, or, you know, just something that was interesting and someone could take on a little talk and then we have, you know, together time talking about other things too. So it wouldn't just be, okay, does anyone have b something back to report? I mean, we could yeah. learn from that. We can learn yeah. from other things. So it, c it could be kind of fun. Okay, so I, oh, right, Periscope. Uh, Laura Mann, Frankly Green and Webb, hi. Um, <laughs> so I think much as, as a new MCN board member, I would like to co-opt this organization. Um, I think you should stay separate from MCN. I think it makes you more agile and nimble and you can be opportunistic about your associations and affiliations. And I mm -hmm. don't, and I also think that being part of the conference um, focus it it focuses it in on this event, and if people can't come to this event, then they're screwed. So I think separate is better. Um, and I think the mentoring setup that you did this time around was um, pretty fantastic, given that it was the first time out of the gate. Like, I really can't find anything significant to criticize about anything you did. The guidelines were great, the suggestions were terrific, I thought your matching skills were great, I think you should consider a future in dating services. <laughs> and, um, uh, and I also, Call but I also us. wouldn't think, to, I mean I think the algorithm in your heads is a good one, stick with it. Um, and, uh, and I think my, my questions have to do with uh, um, carrying it on after the conference and the virtual piece. I think the virtual piece is a really good idea, but will require a lot more sort of structuring. It doesn't have the natural organic component um, or alcohol that um, <laughs> uh, to get it started that this event did. So, um, but I thought overall it was terrific. Thank you. Thanks. I, yeah, I think what we have learned from this, and Nick uh, will do one more comment. Uh, uh, what we've learned from this is actually it's about it's about a finite per period of time. Um, so nobody wants to sign up to do a year-long mentorship because you go, oh my god, I have 30 mm -hmm. exhibitions to open and blah, blah, blah. So that's why it was like nice to think about it as it, you're committing to four days. One lunch, one ha happy hour, the end. And so you thinking about it. Sure? When we have, when I have talked about mentorships in the past or seen things where people have called for mentors, nobody responds mm -hmm. because I think it's a, it's a commitment issue. So I think we would probably try something more in the mid frame. 
Yeah, I mean, that's also part of the survey to find out who is staying in touch and who wants that, too. So we'll find out more concretely from participants. Yeah. Um, Okay, Nick. Uh, So, people at home, Nick Honeyset from Balboa Park, uh, which may, this may be moot now, given what you just said, but uh, AEM used to have a mentorship program. They had a, there's a formal framework, there's a number of organizations that actually provide a tool that allows you to match mentees and mentors, and if you do want that structure going forward, um, I suggest that would be an option, and I'm just talking to Lowett, you know, MCN is a 501c3, we can apply for federal grants, I cannot believe that something like this wouldn't be uh, well received from one of those federal uh, funding organizations, and I think that might give you the structure and the resources to actually think more thoughtfully about this. Thanks. So we are. Thank you for diving deep into the mentorship. Um, we're gonna go back, zoom back out, I guess, and um, keep going talking about women in tech and the initiatives that we've been doing for Amuse Women. Yeah. Just a few more slides, y'all. <laughs> Um, so the career data project, those of you who filled out a survey um, talking about your experience in the sector, um, that was led by Kate Reisman, and they're still working on um, kind of compiling a report based on that information. Uh, Brinker was working really closely with Kate and, and had hoped to be here and to share some early research with you all, but we wanted to um, not rush through that and provide information that would then change, so um, we decided not to, to get into it right now. But um, again, sign up to get emails from Muse Women, and uh, we will send that report to you. Sure, I'll hand it. Uh, so uh, Brinker's also excited to launch, or I guess we launch for Brinker, um, what we're, are going to be um, some tech fellowships that she has been working on. Um, so it is uh, five positions um, that we are hoping to be the start of an example within the tech field. Um, we believe firmly that you don't have to be a developer to be a tech worker. And so um, tech is pervasive, and uh, we want to show the larger tech field, as we mentioned before, that we're building a strong community of female leaders here. So um, we are going to announce in an upcoming press release, I don't know. <laughs> um, a newsletter? A newsletter, yeah, a newsletter, an email, that, um, that we're going to be giving five fellowships. and. Um, they will uh, include uh, an initiative with the five fellows to learn uh, basic HTML, CSS, and JavaScript over the course of a six-month period, I believe. Like yeah. And um, then it will hopefully be building towards a project for um, museums on the web in Los Angeles, or depending on the time frame, towards um, potentially next year's MCN. Um, then, the pilot is uh, supported by GitHub, and when the five fellows have completed their training, they'll each be awarded $1,000 for a conference of their choice in the future. Um, so we're really excited and thankful for Brinker's work doing this, and looking forward to, um, uh, to sort of rolling this out as sort of maybe a new way to think about teaching tech skills, which is something we've been thinking about um, really focusing on in the coming year. And you know more about how she's working on finding the fellows. Do you want to talk about that? Um, I actually don't. Oh, okay. Okay, <laughs> sorry. No, that's okay. Um, I think one thing to point out is that, um, yeah, GitHub was, was very generous with this, um, but it is just a start, and this is something that we're really interested in. We heard from everyone at MW in Chicago this past year that um, – in, there was a, a large interest in learning skills, coding skills in particular for web. Um, and so Brinker just kind of dove in with that and, and got funding and started this up and she would definitely be leading it, leading this project. Um, so she's going, she will write uh, the email announcing who the fellows are and um, getting this started. Yeah. Um. And uh, we're hoping essentially that this will be uh, the first start in building some capacity with the goal um, that the museum or cultural, her cultural heritage field um, be
begins to assert itself in how the audience and visitor platforms are being built. Um, so we need active participants. In order to do that, we need active participants guiding how information and content uh, flows into uh, visitor, visitor platforms and networks and web networks. Mm -hmm. um, and then basically that's uh, what we have for today. So we encourage you to please um, send us an email. This link here is a place to sign up. Uh, to be on our future upcoming email list. And we want you to stay in touch um, and tell us what you need and uh, let us uh, know how we can help you. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah. Sorry, coming. <laughs> Hi, I'm uh, Gretchen Warner, and I work at Emory Libraries in Atlanta. And um, I actually got a scholarship um, through GitHub to go to their conference in Nashville this past June. So, and that connection was made through a local meetup, Rails Girls Atlanta. So I just want to encourage people who, I'm sure most of you maybe are involved in some meetup, but encourage you to look at other resources that can connect you to building skills like that. So. else? I know it's really, really quiet in here. <laughs> kind of warm, right? <laughs> I know, I was on a chair, Liz. You missed it. <laughs> Anybody else? Do you have something, Don? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Fly, bird. Thank you. <laughs>